Welcome back to the Roadside Dawns channel. We are on the Isle of Canna, in Scotland, and we wake up to a drizzly morning. In today's video, we go for a coastal circuit walk on Canna, or rather that's the plan, but not everything goes according to plan. We'll have plenty of adventures today too, so keep watching. This is the second part of our video about the Isle of Canna, if you missed the first one where we explored the neighboring tidal island, Sandy, make sure you check out that video as well and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Canna's coastal circuit is a 19.4 kilometers long walk that goes around the entire island. It takes at least 6 hours to complete. We start from the campsite, towards the western part of the island. Canna is famous for the basalt columns rising on the eastern side of the island, which are a layered sequence of basalt lava flows of Paleocene age. There are many wild animals on the island, it is a great place to watch water birds. Sea eagles and golden eagles also are living here, and puffins nest here every year from spring to the end of summer, on the coastal rocks of the neighboring island of Sandy, which we visited in our previous video. Seals can often be seen in the nearby waters, but dolphins and smaller whales can also be spotted from time to time. In addition to these, it is home to many rare species of butterflies. As a result of the island's fertile soil, the flora is incredibly rich, with 248 native flowering plants recorded. In the protected marine area between Rum and Canna, you can also find rare creatures such as the fan mussel, which has all but disappeared elsewhere in the British Isles. The island is extremely safe, crime is very low, but a police officer from the mainland visits twice a year, mainly to inspect gun licenses. The area around the harbor and the eastern part of the island are quite busy, as most of the tourists are concentrated in those places, while the western part is quiet and peaceful, a real paradise for nature walkers. During our walk, we met a total of two people, but we only saw them from afar. This island is a perfect choice for those who like to get away from the everyday life of bustling cities. It's an indescribable feeling to be here, as if you were on an uninhabited island or as if all people had disappeared and you were alone in the world. The successive lava flows formed a characteristic terrace topography on the island. These lavas came from a large volcano, probably on sky, that erupted when the North Atlantic Ocean was beginning to open around 60 million years ago. This lime-rich basalt is responsible for the island's unusually fertile soil.
Highland cattle breeding was re-established in 1948 by the wife of the previous owner of the island, John Lorne Campbell. There is a story associated with these animals. Ranald Bard, who served as a Laird's representative in Canna, had his clan join the Jacobite rebellions of 1715 to 1745, which were not looked upon favorably by the king's forces. In 1746, when a Royal Navy ship arrived on the island, they demanded to be given the meat from the best cattle on the island. Four days later, the sailors, complaining that the meat was rotten, threw it away and slaughtered 60 cattle for themselves. Twelve days later, another Navy ship arrived on the island. After being warned by one of the sailors about the sailors' lecherous intentions, the women of Canna fled into the countryside in caves until they were certain that the ship had departed. A pregnant woman miscarried from spending so long in the cold and died. The weather today is extremely capricious, it changes suddenly and there are frequent showers of a few minutes. A Gaelic song from the 1860s mentions Canna. The wind that comes from Canna. I feel it warm. I like to be looking in your direction. Short is the time until I'll be coming back to you.
The sounds of seals can be heard from the shore, but they are very far away. We have reached a waypoint. In retrospect, we can conclude that it is better to turn back here, because the northern coastline of the island begins approximately here, which is extremely boggy, difficult to walk on and you can't really find footpaths. We keep going because the walk has proved to be quite easy so far, and we hope it will continue to be so, but unfortunately not.
We move forward on the boggy path, but with each step the ground sinks under our feet and we fear that we will sink somewhere, so we try to be careful. Near Tarberg we deviate from the plan route, because the ground has continued to be very boggy and at this point the other side of the coast is quite close, so we cut across the middle of the island, back to the southern footpath. The plan is that where the southern road branches off to the north, we will go back to the northern coast, and we will continue the walk from there. We arrive at the Neolithic Souterrain underground chamber. This underground passage would have been used in Neolithic times to store foodstuffs. Descending to the entrance you can feel how much cooler it is and you can see the large stones that line the sides and roof of the passageway. We reach the northern shore, but after the underground chamber the footpath disappears again. Nevertheless, we move forward along the coast, but this turns out to be a bad idea, because in some places we have to overcome big ascent in a short distance.
We can already see the eastern end of the island, but we still have to go a long way through boggy terrain without a path, so we again deviate from the plan route and cross the island again to the south. We don't have an easy task, because we are on top of the coastal rocks and they are quite steep everywhere. We are trying to somehow get down to the south coast, to the harbor. Finally, we manage to get down and for relax we go to the restaurant to have something delicious for dinner. While we wait for the ordered food to be ready, we try to refresh ourselves with drinks. The evening is a bit chilly, but very pleasant and peaceful. Who would believe that it is already 10 o'clock p.m.? Good morning everyone, today we are saying goodbye to Kana, but before that we will check out some popular places. If someone comes here for just one day, these are the places you can easily visit in and around the center of the island. Before set off, we prepare our bags, which the host will take to the harbor. All we have to do is leave them in the designated area, and they will collect them from there. Our ferry depart back to Malig at 4 pm, so we still have plenty of time.
The beautiful white sand, Caribbean-like sandy beach is known by locals as Trebon, which means white beach in Scottish Gaelic. If you can tolerate cold water, this is the perfect place to swim, as the island of Canna protects it from the bigger waves. On a nice sunny day, the water is extremely clear and turquoise in color. It is located at the beginning of Sandy, just cross the bridge and turn right. The earliest settlement of Cana once stood in the place called Ackle, which houses an early Christian cross from the 8th century. Almost nothing remains of the settlement today, but the cross still stands. You can get here by following the signposts from St. Columbus Chapel. The path leads through a forest. On the way, we passed the grave of John Lorne Campbell, the former owner of the island. He died in Italy and was buried there, but after 10 years, according to Italian custom, his remains were exhumed and moved to this gravesite on Cana. About 1,500 years ago, the islands became an important monastic site, linked to St. Columba and his mission from Iona in the 6th century. This cross was carved about 1,300 years ago. From medieval times the islands were administered by the Macdonalds of Clan Ranald. The ruins of Corrigan Castle stand on the side of a steep rock stack. The fortified stack is located at the eastern end of Canna and looks out towards sky. It was built in the 17th century by Donald MacDonald, probably as a prison for his second wife, Marion MacLeod, of whom he was so jealous that he wanted to lock her up here. Beneath the castle lies Corrigan Beach, known only as the Black Beach by the locals due to its black sand. On the other side of the castle is a pebble beach, and above it rises Compass Hill. This 139-meter high hill is made of a volcanic rock called Tuff and has such a high iron content that the compass of nearby ships are distorted and points towards the hill rather than north.
Cats Galore is a children's trail inspired by the cats of John and Margaret Campbell of Canna House. The couple is best known for their passion for folklore, history, art and Gaelic culture, but few know about their passion for cats. Although Canna House was full of cats of all shapes and sizes and they bred Siamese cats for many years. Twelve different cats is scattered in different places, which can be interesting not only for children. We found six, but if someone wants to find all of them, pick up a clue sheet that you can find in various points on the island, for example in the shop or in the waiting room, which will help you find all the cats. There are a total of three churches on Canna and Sandy, two of which are on Canna. Before Rua Church was built, residents had to travel 30 miles to the nearest parish church. Due to the shape of its tower, the it is informally known as the Rocket Church. It was built mainly for the Protestant residents of the island, but since the majority of the inhabitants are Catholics, it is rarely used. Canna's Catholic Chapel is St. Columba's Chapel, dedicated to St. Columba. The third church is located on Sandy. Information about it, you can find in our previous video. We buy some refreshments at the shop and then head to the ferry port. Our luggage arrives almost at the same time as we see the ferry approaching to the port. We had a great time on Canna and if there weren't so many other islands that we wanted to explore, we would definitely come back here, but even so it's not impossible. Keep watching us, because there are many more beautiful places that we want to show you. Thank you for watching.